what I'd like to do is all the people that attended the first part of this class, if you could write in and just let me know you attended, because that way I can figure out where I should start from. If most of you did attend the first class, then I'll just move forward. If most of you didn't, then I will do a, a more detailed explanation. So again, the Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers that adds together the previous number and that gives you your, your secondary number and they are prime numbers. So you take one and then one plus one gives you two. One plus two gives you three. Two plus three gives you five. Three plus five gives you eight. Eight plus five gives you 13. 13 plus eight gives you 21. And the sequence goes on for indefinitely. Now, the Fibonacci golden rule is based on certain mathematical relations uh, expressed in ratios between numbers in a series. Their discovery was popularized in the Western world by the 13th century mathematician Leonardo Fibonacci. They have applications in diverse fields such as biology, music, arts, and literature. And these numbers, which are then transcribed, transcribed, transcribed into percentages have no other type of explanation. They are in the symmetry of our face. They are in the way the stars and the planets function. They are in our genetic code. Nobody knows why, and to be honest with you, there is no real explanation. Now, it's a matter of faith. And we all know what faith is. We're not talking about religious faith. We're talking about Faith in believing in something that you cannot prove. And excuse me, let me interrupt for a second. You guys are typing in lots and lots of messages to me. Okay, and if you have computer problems, I cannot help you. If you're only able to see part of a screen, you can't see this, your screen is dark. It's on your side. Everybody else of the hundreds of people that are here are saying just fine. So either reboot your computer, try your refresh mode, figure out what your settings are, but I can't help you individually with your own computer settings. Okay, so thank you very much, and I'm sorry I can't, but if you have serious problems, there is the email you receive from Citrix, a technical number, you can call them quickly on the phone and they'll help try to help you get set up properly. But it shouldn't be a problem, so just try refreshing. Now, Fibonacci trading is becoming more and more popular because it works in any market, including Forex and stocks, which react easily to Fibonacci numbers and levels. Fibonacci trading involves knowing when and where the markets reverse in order to keep moving. The most important thing in Fibonacci trading is that the Fibonacci levels act as support and resistance. When the price goes up, they act as resistance and vice versa. All, also, like ordinary support and resistance, when a Fibonacci level is broken as resistance, it becomes support and can be retested. It works the same way in Fibonacci support levels if it becomes broken, and then it can work as resistance. Now, because I cannot give you a reason that these work, the only way you're going to believe in these is to try them. And when you use them over and over and over again and see how often the retracements or the support and resistance levels at the Fibonacci levels work, then you will have faith in these numbers. So if you ask why Fibonacci Forex and Fibonacci stock markets work, the answer is we don't know. The only thing we do know is that Fibonacci numbers work in everything from microscopic materials like the DNA molecule to the distance between our eyes, ears, hands, and even the distance in the planets in our solar system and the way they move in space, even the distance in the pathway of the stars in the universe, and finally in the currency prices and the way they move up and down. Fibonacci's can be found anywhere in the world. So Fibonacci numbers are not exclusive to the financial markets. 
Now, all traders need to know about Fibonacci retracements is that there are certain percentages by which trends tend to retrace before continuing in their original direction. When a retrace begins, traders can mark these percentage levels these uh, as a percentage of the trend's distance and anticipate possible reversals of these levels, which can act to form support and resistance. Now, the, res the levels, now there's a multitude of Fibonacci levels, and you can use them all the way down to infinitesimal little numbers. But the four key numbers when you're using a Fibonacci retracement, the four key percentages is 61, 8, 50, 38, 2, and 23, 6. Now, 50 is not a Fibonacci number from the Fibonacci sequence. It is 50% of where the distance of the trend had gone up or down. And it is so prevalent and recurs so often, it has been added in you know, years and years ago. Not, it's not something I added in. It's something that's now part of the standard Fibonacci sequence for retracement. So we use 23.6, 38.2, 50, and 61.8. Now, these levels are the percentage of the move of the previous trend. So if it was an uptrend, it's where that uptrend started to where that uptrend is. And then you take 23.6 and that's of that point and drop it down. You take 38.2 and drop it a line in 50% of that current movement and then 61.8, and you have your Fibonacci's. on the scale. Now, Fibonacci trading is trading based on certain mathematical relationships expressed in ratios between numbers in a series. Traders found that trends tend to retrace prior movements according to the very same ratios, which are they translate to 23.6, 38.2, 50, 61.8, and then a course of 100%. For example, when a downtrend is finished, as it moves higher and retraces the downtrend, it tends to pause or reverse after it's recovered 23.6, 38.2, 50, 61, 8 of the prior downtrend. So remember, the three and the three most important numbers are 38, 250, and 61, 8. You should be able to recognize these and understand them very, very, very quickly. Okay. So by drawing lines that show the percent retracement of the prior trend on their charts, traders can better predict where future price moves might stall or reverse. Now, Fibonacci retracements use horizontal lines to indicate areas of support and resistance. So in other words, and you don't have to draw these on Today's chart systems will drop them on for you. But you take, in this case, we, would we have drawn on our Fibonacci retracements at this downtrend. Okay. And then we measure the distance between that trend and we measure each of the, then the Fibonacci levels in between. You then have a downtrend here. And then you have another downtrend here and each one, and you can use multiple Fibonacci levels and overlap them. We'll, sh we'll look at that in a minute when we look at strategies. And then you draw five lines on a chart. So they are calculated very easily. You locate the, by first locating the high and the low on the chart of the previous trend. Then you take and draw five lines. The first is at 100%, which is the top of the trend or the bottom of the trend, depending on where it went. The second is a 61.8 of the prior move. Now, you can, you can just calculate these very easy, but like I said, the computerized charts will put them on for you. Or a lot of people that do it by hand go next to the 50% because that's really easy to calculate. And then drop into 61.8 and then the 38% two, and then to 21, six, and then to zero. Okay. So they're fairly easy 
to put on a chart if you're going to do them by hand. But today, like I said, all the modern charts will do this for you. So whether you're using the, the systems on the trading platform you're using or you're using uh, private services or using the charting service on investing.com, they all will offer them under indicators. Now, other besides the standard Fibonacci retracement, excuse me, there are all kinds of other applications that people have come up with. Okay. They are used less and less. Fibonacci lines are the most important, but you should be aware that there's Fibonacci arch. Okay, they use the same numbers, but an arc is drawn at 38, 250, and 61, 8. But I don't use these. I don't know any, but well, actually, I'm going to show you an example of a chart tonight that has them on there. But I don't really any, know anybody who uses them and why they use them. But there are strategies to develop them. Then we have Fibonacci fans. And Fibonacci fans work very much like GAN fans. You locate the swing low, and then you would draw lines out and a fan type motion at the 31.8, the 61.8, the 31.2, the 61.8, and the 50% line. Again, I don't know anybody who uses these because they use GAN fans, which are a little bit better than the Fibonacci fans, but you should be aware that they exist. And then lastly, we have Fibonacci time zones. And these are time zones that are put on a chart based on the same Fibonacci numbers. I don't even know exactly how to do this. I don't know how you would use it for interpretation. It's just something that there is out there and you'll see it now and then, but I've never used it and I don't know a soul who does but you'll hear about them now and then if you start reading about Fibonacci's, you'll see somebody refer to the Fibonacci time zones. So you should be aware that it, they exist. But unlike the Fibonacci methods, time zones are a series of vertical lines. They are composed by dividing a chart into segments with vertical lines spaced apart in increments that confirm with the Fibonacci sequence. Now, when we talk about Fibonacci's, and most people, when they talk about Fibs or they talk about Fibonacci's, they're talking about the standard Fibonacci support and resistance levels that we saw that are parallel lines or horizontal lines drawn on a chart. Now, these Fibonacci studies are not intended to provide the primary indication for timing the entry and exit points of a stock or an asset. However, they are useful for estimating areas of support and resistance. Many people use combinations of Fibonacci studies to obtain a more accurate forecast. For example, a trader may observe the intersecting points in a combination of Fibonacci arch and resistances. Many more use the Fibonacci studies in conjunction with other forms of technical analysis. For example, the Fibonacci studies are often used with Elliott wave patterns to predict the extent of the retracement of the different waves. Hopefully, you can find your own niche to use Fibonacci studies. I basically use them on my charts to try to figure out, they give me a better idea of where support and resistance should be. And I use them not independently, I use them in conjunction with whatever strategy I'm using at that moment because I firmly believe that retracements do occur at these important levels. So I combine them with what I call eyeballing because I started with back in the old days when we charted by hand. So we would eyeball support and resistance levels because support and resistance levels are the peaks and the valleys of price movement and price places, strategic prices where buyers have hemmed and hawed. So first I just use a straight edge and, and eyeball them across my chart. Then I would drop on Fibonacci levels to give me a more defined price level, which is based on retracement of the previous trend. And then I'll use support and resistance from pivot points, which give me a numeric value also. And I combine these together because when price is moving up or down, I like to know where I can expect an action or reaction. And that's what they'll help you do. They'll help you have a better understanding of where price should move up and down. So how do you use Fibonacci retracements? The Fibonacci retracement pattern can be very useful to swing traders to identify reversals on a chart. On this page, uh, or in this class, we're gonna look at Fibonacci sequence and show some examples of how you can identify the pattern. 
Fibonacci numbers, well, well, let's not go into this again, but they were developed by Leonardo Fibonacci. So we have Fibonacci retracements. So when price is moving up against the downtrend, we expect price to push up and ease back down to the 38.2, or it can push up and ease back down to the 50. There is no law that says it has to ease back to those. But when price is moving up and it starts to retrace, it's most likely to either retrace to the 38.2, maybe a steeper retracement of 50, or a very steep retracement to 61.8. But you'll see if it breaks through the 38.2, you can say that it's most likely going to go to that 50 level, which you've already calculated. So securities will often pull back or retrace a percentage of the previous move before reversing. These Fibonacci levels occur at 38.250 and 61.8. Actually, the 50 level really does not have anything to do with Fibonacci's, but traders use this level because of the tendency to st of stocks or securities to re reverse after retracing half of the previous move. Now, after a security makes a move to the upside, it can then retrace a part of that move before moving on again in a desired direction. Because remember, the markets don't move in a constant, consistent upswing. They don't move straight up. They don't move in a straight line. They push and thrust, push and ease, thrust and ease, thrust and ease. Now, we need to know when they thrust and then they start to ease. Is that really an ease? And at what level would it ease down to it to thrust again? And in most cases, it will ease down in that thrust series to the 38.2, the 50, or the 61.8. Okay. Now, we can then judge and make an assessment of the markets. Okay. Once an asset begins to pull back or retrace, then you can plot these retracement levels on a chart to look for signs of reversal. You do not automatically buy a stock just because it is at a common retracement level. Wait and look for candlestick patterns to develop at the 38.2 level. If you do not see any signs of reversal, then it, it may go down to the 50 area. Look for a reversal there. You do not know if and when the stock will reverse at a Fibonacci level. You just mark these areas on a chart and wait for the signals to go long or short. So before we go on, let me take you over some charts so you understand what we're talking about on real live charts. So hold on, I got some charts ready. I'm gonna pop them up on your monitor. Okay, now this is a, per now these are live charts. This is not anything that was made months ago for, for a class, but this is a current chart of natural gas. Now look at all of these retracements. It's actually each one of these, and you can have many Fibonacci sets of Fibonacci levels because they keep defining for you more and more definition or give you more and more points in common. But as we moved each time, we came here and we measured the downtrend and then we put it on. And so here is the zero. Here's the zero level. Here's the 100 level, and then the Fibonacci retracements are just dropped on there. And we can look and see each one of these levels, how critical these levels were to price movement. You know, look at the 61.8. Look at how many tops you had on 61.8. Then we come down to 100, and look at what happened when it hit the 100 retracement. It bounced off of there and moved back up and then moved back farther into that downtrend. But look at this. You know, when we talk about thrust and ease, you can have thrust and ease in each segment. But look at how perfectly thrust, ease, thrust, ease, thrust, ease. And each one of these fits into a segment of Fibonacci retracements. So, but it is critical to not use these independently. They are, they are simply giving you information. Okay, they help you in your determination of how the market's going to move. Now, actually, let me bring up a chart here, and I just want to get my markings off here. Okay. Um, 
Okay, real quickly, this is uh, somebody else's chart that I copied I, for you, but this is somebody who was using Fibonacci arches. I don't even know how to interpret this because I never used it, but I just want you to see it on a chart. Now, let me open up a chart for you. Come on. Okay, so here is a basic chart. This is a bar chart. Now, we're going to take this downtrend here for to put our Fibonacci's on. So we're going to identify the swing high and the swing low. So this was the whole movement of this trend here. So we will then, and almost all the charting systems work exactly the same. We're going to come over here and we're going to locate the the icon that lets you put on Fibonacci's. And we just come down here, Fibonacci retracement, and we come over here to our 100%. We simply pull it down to our bottom. And now we have our Fibonacci retracements right on our current chart. That's how easy it is to do. It's already calculated. All we do is pull it from the 100 level down to the, to the zero level, click the button. It's already done the calculations, given you everything on the charts for you, and you have it here. Now, we can decide that the current uptrend has ended, although we're not sure yet, but we could decide to, to use this area to do another Fibonacci retracement uh, level. But the fact is we're not sure this uptrend is over because it's only eased back down a little bit here and it could continue up so we might not get the right 100 and zero. So we always use a finished previous trend. So in this case, we use this downtrend. And so we can see right here is our 23.6, right here is our 38.2, and it's already done the calculations actually giving you the exact prices of this asset. And so now we would expect, okay, the asset to come back up here may as far and possibly to 100, which it did bounce off of there and it came right back down here and is sitting right on a Fibonacci level right here at 76. And we could either expect it to bounce up to the, to the 100 then, or it's, if it's going to come back down, come back down to the 61.8. But this is exactly how you put it on your charts, and it's it's pretty simple, except you can't use it as a trading system. You incorporate it into your trading system. So like here, we're using other reasons, but we also have our Fibonacci levels on here. They've already been calculated. But you can use these to combine in here where your take profit, your buy, and your stop loss were. So we would buy above 1003, stop loss of 100. Now, what we had is our Fibonacci extension and our, and our hard level short, where we see a bounce towards at least a 1009, which is the Fibonacci retracement level. Okay. On this chart, you can actually see the Fibonacci retracements. And what we're doing is we use it with Elliott wave patterns also. And we saw the price bounce up here to 61.8. And now we're expecting it to come down here to these lower levels and at this point now we put it on between the a and the b here you can see it bounced up to the 50 percent level then it bounced back down to the 618 level now we're expecting it we don't even know where it's going to come down to but we're expecting it to come down but all of these are based on fibonacci retracements but as you can see this is a beautiful move in the natural gas, okay? And you had three different Fibonacci fans put up, Fibonacci retracement levels put on here. So if you had been trading up to this point, guys, I've explained it to you once already. I'll explain it to you one more time. I cannot help you with your screens. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got to do with your internet 
and your computer. Either refresh your computer, log off and log back in completely, uh, but it has absolutely nothing to do with anything on this side. We have a, what, several hundred people in here tonight, and it's one or two or three people have it, and it's just on your side only. So I can't really help you. Now, if at this point, this if we were trading here, you know, we hadn't reached all the way over here to the window, and we would have drawn our Fibonacci, we have our trend line, we would have used this for our top and our bottom of our Fibonacci level, and we would have dropped this retracement levels on here. Then we, as price moved forward, we got another downtrend, and we would have expended our Fibonacci levels there and moving so forward. So again, natural gas is repeating going down and then retracing back to the 28.3 level. Its retrace is complete and is now expected to fall again. Okay. So it's retraced here in current the current market to the 28.3, and we're expecting it to then bounce off of there and come back down. If resistance is broken and then move to the $2.76 rate and go long for now, it's a go short, and we're expecting it to go short off of that Fibonacci level. So let's go back over to my PowerPoint. And let me pull that back up on your screen. Let's talk a little bit more about. Okay, so why, what and why are retracements? Retracement levels alert traders or investors of a potential trend reversal, resistance areas and support areas. Retracements are based on the prior move. A bounce is expected to retrace a portion of the prior decline, while a correction is expected to retrace a portion of the prior advance. Once a pullback starts, charters can identify specific Fibonacci retracement levels by mo but for monitoring. As the correction approaches, these retracements Charters should become more alert for a potential bullish retracement reversal. And the chart that you're looking at shows Home Depot retracing 50%. Now, the inverse applies to a bounce or corrective advance after a decline. Once a bounce begins, charters can identify specific Fibonacci retracement levels for monitoring. As the correction approaches these retracements, charters should become more alert for a potential bearish reversal. The chart shows here 3M. Retracing would be to a 50% of its prior decline. So again, <clears throat> we start out here. This is a downtrend that has ended, okay? So we would start with pulling down from this to the zero, this is 100, pulling down to here, which is zero, and then the system would automatically calculate retracements at 61.8, 50%, at 38.2. You can project these far out into the future. You can use them as far as you want to use them. So we can see as price moved up, it came all the way up here to the 50 retracement and then broke below it and then bounced off of it. So we have the retracement zones and <clears throat> the corrective advance. So when it was advancing, it moved up here to the 38.2, bounced off of it, then moved back up and it can break through just fine, came up to the 50 and bounced off of there again. So they're just, again, areas to will alert you that we expect some type of price action. And if they work properly, they're going to tell you that the trend is continuing. And what happens is too many people that are in the market panic when they see they don't understand the difference between a reversal and a retracement. 
pr prices continually retrace as they're moving up. And these Fibonacci levels will help you understand that what you're in is a retracement because what happens is price is moving up. Here we're looking at 3M. Price is moving up. You bought 3M at 74, 75. It's moving up, moving up. Now, it moves up as high as 82. Then it retraces down to 78. And you panic and you sell. And because you think it's a reversal. But if you would have watched properly, you would have realized it was a retracement because when it roars back, it roars back and probably went up to 86. And what happens is you end up closing out trades way before you should have closed them because you don't understand the difference between a retracement and a reversal. Now, somebody asked me, is Fibonacci a good tool to use for all time frame charts? I mean, an hourly, daily, and weekly. You apply Fibonacci's... <clears throat> on the chart you are working on okay and if you're if you're using a 15 minute chart in your trading strategy you apply the fibonacci's in 15 minutes and you use those those trend lines in the 15 minutes if you use a four hour chart because you're so it, it it's different for a swing trader than it is for a day trader or a long-term investor they're all laid out on the charts the same way but you have to incorporate them into the trading strategy and the trading plan that you are using. But they work in all hours of charts. Now, keep in mind that these retracement levels are not hard reversal points. Instead, they serve as alert zones for a potential reversal. It is at this point that traders should employ other aspects of technical analysis to identify or confirm a reversal. These may include candlesticks, price patterns, momentum oscillators, and moving averages. <clears throat> so let's illustrate the point using FIBS because unlike other kinds of support and resistance, you can see the shorter and the longer term support and resistance areas all at once on one chart by plotting sets of Fibonacci's for shorter term up and down trends that occur within a longer trend. <clears throat> so like I showed you on the, the chart for natural gas, we had three sets of Fibonacci levels on there. Now, somebody asked me, do these work for Forex? They are primarily used for Forex. Okay. Now, <clears throat> again, in order to find these retracement levels, you have to find the recent significant swing high and swing low. Okay. The word significant is very important. It is not the lowest price it went to just because price dipped down for one second because an asset fell. You need to find a significant, the significant low and the significant high, okay. which is usually the highest and the lowest point. But you need to find where there, there was more congestion at that price, not the lowest point that it went to. Like with trend lines, you cannot ever have a trend line broken. That's not true when you're developing the, the point in which to pull your Fibonacci level. That, <clears throat> so you have to find the recent significant swing highs and swing lows. Then for downtrends, click on the swing high and drag the cursor to the most recent swing low. For uptrends, do the opposite. Click on the swing low and drag the cursor to the most recent swing high. And the computer will do the rest for you. So here we plotted the Fibonacci retracement levels by clicking on the swing low at 69.55 and dragging our cursor to the swing high of 82.64. Okay. Ta-da, the software magically shows you the retracement levels. That's all you have to do. And as you can see on the chart, the Fibonacci retracement levels are at 79.55, 77.64, 76.09, and you can and 74.54 at 72.63. Now the expectation is that the Australian US dollar retraces from the recent high, it will find support at one of those Fibonacci levels because traders will be placing orders at these levels as price pulls back. Because this is what you're expecting. 
So here you've got your level on here. Now, as price is pulling back and hits the 38.2, you'll, you'll end up seeing buyers buy because it's bouncing off of here. And they've already calculated they want to enter the market. They're waiting for it to break and retrace a Fibonacci level. And then they enter their buy orders. So they're buying, driving the price up. So price pulled back right through the 23.6 level and continued to shoot down to the next, uh, for the next couple of weeks. It even tested the 38.2 level, but was unable to cross below it. Later on, the markets resumed its upward move and eventually broke through the swing high. Clearly, buying at the 32, 38.2 Fibonacci level would have been a profitable long-term trade. Now, the question is, how do you draw these lines? So how do you identify Fibonacci patterns on charts? It's easy. We draw a Fibonacci grid using the swing points, as I showed you. Okay. And it's very, very simple. But when you see price actually reacting to these levels, this is when your blind faith will kick in. Because sooner or later, you have to learn to trust these. So improperly applying technical analysis methods will lead to a disastrous, disastrous result, such as bad entry points and mounting losses on currency positions. Here we'll examine how not to apply Fibonacci retracements to the foreign exchange market. Get to know the common mistakes, and chances are you'll be able to avoid them, avoid making them and suffering the consequences in your trading. So number one, don't ignore long-term trends. New traders often try to measure significant moves and pullbacks in short term without keeping the bigger picture in mind. This narrow perspective makes short-term traders more than a bit misguided. By keeping tabs on the long-term trend, the trader is able to apply Fibonacci retracements in the correct direction of momentum and set themselves up for great opportunities. So over here in figure three, we establish that the long-term trend for the British pound New Zealand dollar currency is an upward trend. Okay. We apply Fibonacci to see our first level of support at 20, which is at $2.10 at $2 or the 38.2 Fibonacci level. And then from there to the $2.648 to the $2.12. This is a perfect spot to go long on the currency pair. So for the person who asked me about Forex, this is what's critically important is you don't take short-term 15-minute charts and try to add a short-term downtrend and try to add the Fibonacci's onto that and make a decision on it. You need to look at a longer-term trend okay, in that move that, and then use those numbers because you will get confused because in that short-term chart, you'll see a downtrend when the price was actually just ended an uptrend. Okay. So you need to see and see where the longer term and the medium term trend are to get more accurate Fibonacci levels. But if we take a look at the short term, the picture looks much different. So a Fibonacci retracement applied on a short term time frame can give the traders a false impression. After a run-up in the currency pair, we can see a potential short opportunity in the five-minute time frame. This is a trap. By not keeping to the longer-term view, the short seller applies Fibonacci here from the I just get my mark from the 21.2 to the uh, the 21.2 to 21.10, leading a short position to 21.10.97 as opposed to the longer term, because you can use those Fibonacci levels from a longer term chart and pull them onto your most current chart. And you simply do that by clicking it. Actually, let's go over and do it. It's not difficult. Let me bring up the charts again. Okay. So right now we dropped, we were looking at a Euro GBP 30 minute chart. We dropped our current Fibonacci levels on there and this is our short term. But if we want to get a long term perspective, let's go back to a one day chart. Um, actually, let's use a four hour chart to be easier today. Now we can see Fibonacci retracement. Fibonacci is actually in a, ended a downtrend which started here and 
this would have been your 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 swing low, but this is a more significant swing low here. So we would have put our Fibonacci's on here. Let me just get my marker shut off here. And oh, come on. For some reason, my computer doesn't want to work here. I had to do this in reverse for some reason. I don't know why. This is just their charting system having a difficult time tonight. Okay, so we put the longer term Fibonacci based on the long term trend. And now we're going to go back to our 30-minute chart. And we then have our longer-term Fibonacci level on here. And we can see that the 88.6 is the mo more crucial level from the previous. For some reason, my, my charts don't want to. My cursor is not working on my chart properly for some reason. Sometimes it's because of the software for the the class. But as we can see, we have the longer term Fibonacci still on here. And so we can see the price just bounced off the 88.6 level. And it so 84.92 was in a significant level from the previous price level. And we saw the price came up to it and then bounced off of there. So you can use a combination of longer term and short term Fibonacci's, but you don't want to use them five minute and 15 minute scales. Now let's go back over to my PowerPoint. So a Fibonacci retracement applied on a short term time frame can give traders a false impression. The short trade does net a trader a handsome 50 point 50 pip profit, but it comes at the expense of a 400 pip move advance that follows. The better plan would have been to enter a long position for the GBP NZD at the shorter term 2110 level and let it run the 400 points. So that's why. <clears throat> This is why you would want to use the longer term <clears throat> Fibonacci levels. Now, don't rely on Fibonacci alone. Fibonacci can provide reliable trade setups, but not without confirmation. Applying additional technical tools like MACD or stochastics oscillators will, will support the trade opportunity and increase the likelihood of a good trade. Without these methods to act as confirmation, a trader will be left with little more than hope of a positive outcome. So taking a look at the chart on the right, we see the retracement of the medium term move higher in the Euro-Japanese Yen currency pair. Beginning on January 10, 2011, the EUR-JPY exchange rate rose to a high of 113.94. Over the course of almost two weeks applying our Fibonacci retracement sequence, we arrived at a 38.2 retracement at 111.42. Following the retracement lower, we noticed that the stochastics oscillator is also confirming the momentum lower. And then you got a confirmation and you would have made a good trade. Now, now that the opportunities come alive as the price action tests our Fibonacci retracement at 111.40 on January 30th, seeing this as an opportunity to go long, we confirm the price point with the stochastics which shows an oversold signal. A trader taking this position would have profited almost by one and a quarter percent or 160 pips. So you need more than a single thing. Now, as I've been stating over and over, do not use Fibonacci's over short intervals. Day trading the foreign exchange market is exciting, but there are lots of volatility. For this reason, applying Fibonacci retracements over short-term time frames is ineffective. The shorter the term, the time frame, 
the less reliable the Fibonacci, the retracement levels are. Volatility can and will skew support and resistance levels, making it very difficult for traders to really pick and choose what levels can be traded. Not to mention the fact that in the short term, spikes and whipsaws are very common. These dynamics can make it especially difficult to place stops and take profit points as retracements can create narrow and tight confluences. Just check out the Canadian dollar Japanese yen example here on the right. So what you want to do is you want to use, like I said, 30 minute, one hour, and then bring them forward to help you see in shorter term. But building a Fibonacci retracement level on a 15 minute chart or a 10 minute chart is going to be very inaccurate. Now we attempt to apply Fibonacci's to interday moves of the Canadian dollar Japanese yen exchange rate. Here, volatility is high. This causes longer wicks in price action, creating the potential for misanalysis of certain support levels. It also doesn't help that our Fibonacci levels are separated by a mere six pips on the average, increasing the likelihood we'll get stopped out. So remember, as with any other statistical study, the more data that is used and the stronger the, stronger the analysis. Sticking to longer term timeframes when applying Fibonacci sequence can improve the reliability of each level. The bottom line, as with any specialty, it takes time and practice to become better at using Fibonacci retracements and Forex trading. Don't allow yourself to become frustrated. The long-term rewards definitely outweigh the costs. Follow the simple rules of applying Fibonacci retracements and learn from the common mistakes to help you analyze profitable opportunities in the market. And why you do that, practice it, put it on your charts, look at it, test them, learn to, learn to have your faith in these numbers, and then learn how to see what is a retracement, a reversal, or a continuation, and start using these in your everyday trading. So thank you very much, and we'll see you again, and good luck using Fibonacci levels. Good night now.